XM0124, it took you damn long enough. Spent your sweet ass time cleaning your ear follicles, huh? What? Okay, I, I'm guessing it's a. Uh... Hello again. Let's see. You are XM0 124 of the Alkians race, longtime resident of, you guessed it, the planet Alkia. I mean, yeah. Furthermore, this big old colorful rock you call home rotates at a measly speed of 100 Alkian lengths per quarter Alkia day. That means your nights are few and far between and last just as long as your wearisome days. How boring. It does, however, mean that your dreams are bloody crazy. I mean, you would know it better than anyone. You're in one right now. Who are you? So I'm in a dream? My name is Somnus. You might have mistaken me for my brother, but if you see him, that means you're in a load of trouble. But anyway, is it strange for you to be the one asking questions? All I am is a reflection of your inner thoughts. I guess it makes sense, though. Given the rarity of nights, your species don't dream very often, and the dreams that do happen are all spaced out. In turn, your kin have failed to develop a dream sense when they sleep, and always regress into the same pitiful amnesiac self. Kind of cute when you think about it, but annoying for me because I gotta explain this stuff every time. I digress. There's more important things to discuss. Listen, things are about to get shaken up, buddy. Big time. And I hate to say it, but the responsibility for it is gonna fall squarely on you. I'll tell you about it in the next room. Okie dokie. So yeah, this RPG Maker game. Uh, oh, cool. I, I always dashes on. Well, no, no, no. Don't game end. There we go. Okay. Yeah, I mean, always dash. Hello again. Now, what's your name? I know. You're XM0124 of the Alkians race. But I mean, what is your name? You know? What? Sorry, getting a drink. Uh, it's not rocket science. Just tell me. What is your name? Sorry, I didn't realize my mouse was in the middle of the screen there. Uh, it's going to go. Zanzi. I see. Zanzi. What an interesting name. Thank you, man. Now, Zanzi, I must ask. Oh. Oh. Oh, my. Which of these beings best represents you? Um. Hmm. I mean, probably default expression over here. I'm being, ah, this guy's... A little closer. I have brown hair. I say this one. Is this the being who best represents you? Yeah. So be it. Now follow me into the next room. Wee. Oh wow, nice room. Now this is the final room. I promise. I'm gonna need you to tell me one last thing. Your species has no concept of a relationship, as far as I know. This would make sense, given reproduction is pretty much handled by a single queen. But still, I need you to answer this question with utmost attention and honesty. If you had a partner, what would their name be? Ooh, uh... Let's just do... This was a girl I had a crush on, like, ten years ago. Gabby, I see. Now, what what does Gabby look like? One of these, which of one of these beings would be most likely to represent your partner? Um, only either her or her. I'm gonna say her. Yeah. So be it. Listen, XM0124, or Zanzi, whatever you prefer. We're approaching the end of the road for this dream anyway. Though you may soon wish you had never woken up, you must soldier on. 
state of life as we know it dangles ever so precariously in your appendages. So, um, no pressure. Okay. I haven't seen a save option for this, so I'm assuming this game isn't terribly long. Or you save at certain... Yeah, you probably save at certain points. Uh, what a strange dream. Terminal whose sole use is to monitor and maintain your sleeping pod. Above it sits a simple placard. XM0124, it reads. Terminal. Nothing seems to be awry. Despite what you may think, this is a computer. It's operated by putting one's eyes up to goggles and using ocular movements as a means of control. Put your eyes inside. What commands do you wish to exit? Okay, save. Seems your front door is locked. Terminal is to maintain uh, some... Oh. Well, let's do the computer. Unlock door. Let's look at some of the other stuff. This uh, supercomputer. View e-communications. I got two new ones. Two... Uh, two XM, uh, two Zanzi from do not reply, hold detect. Subject auto e-communication, hole breach. Photon analysis detected a possible hole presence within radio warehouse 17. Current data has this location as your post. Please report to your supervisor for more information. Second e-communication, two Zanzi from XM309. Importance beyond critical. Report to me immediately after w awakening protocol. All has been lost. End of e-communications has been reached. Ooh, that seems like a bad one. Um, shit, what, what was it? Your new ones? Uh-huh. Uh-huh, uh-huh. XM3009. Um, I'm guessing this way. Oh. Okay. No business in other bedrooms, of course. XM3009. Stop, dog. XM0124. It took you damn long enough. Spent your sweet ass time cleaning your ear follicles, huh? What? Don't what me, you maggot. Good lord, your dreamnesia may, might be worse than I thought. Now it's got you struggling to retain your memories in the real world. Believe me, if I had to wait, a way to keep you workers awake at all time, it w <clears throat> it'll make things a lot damn easier around here. See, I'm not sure if you remember this, but I'm the general manager of Unit 17. Makes me the prime overseer of, among other things, Rations Bunker 17, Sleep Warehouse 17, and most importantly, Radio Tower 17, your location of employment. Why is that important? Well, besides being the place that you work at, when it comes down to it, radio towers are the biggest hope for survival of our species. Say, hey, do you even remember what the hole are? I'll take that as a no. God damn it, time is of the essence now, and I gotta sit here explaining things to Sleepyhead over here. Shit. You should know, Alki is home to not just one, but two intelligent species. There's us, the Alkians, but there's another. They're called the Hole. Terrifying beasts, though not quite as intelligent as us, they're twice as deadly. They can only live in darkness, which means when night rolls around, they're on the prowl. Well-lit and well-fortified buildings, however, are a means to keep us safe during the night. But somehow they found a way into the generator below our radio tower and destroyed them, taking over the tower in the process. Curse them! Been damn near 1,000 Alkia rotations since the last attack of this scale. We thought the barriers around the generators would stop anything. To make things worse, because it's been so long, a lot of our military equipment has been decommissioned anyway. Not, a, not that it would make much difference at this point. So, Megan, I'm sure you see where I'm going with this. That radio equipment is our ticket to contacting a planet capable of fostering life and getting the hell out of here. I'm going to need you to get in there, get our transmitters and receivers, and bring them back here. Do you understand? Um, why me? You begin to come to the realization that all the open doors you saw earlier were other Alkians that have been sent out before. Okay, so... He's just sending out waves of people to die. Wow, real uh, Zap Brannigan here. What happened to them? Hmm. You understand the meaning of your own name? XM0124? That zero is there for a reason. Notice that it's less than the three in my name. XN3009. Do you know what that means? 
I'm guessing this guy's a little higher rank, but I'm gonna say no, I don't know what it means. It means that you do what I want. I'll be honest. I've arranged for your rank to awake one by one. Sent you all out in file. And nobody's returned just yet. But that doesn't matter one bit. What matters is I ga just gave you an order, and disobeying orders is not what Alkians do. So get going. Clock's ticking. I gotta start wa waking up the next in line in case you don't come back. <laughs> that look on your face. You have no idea what's going on, do you? Almost feel bad about sending you to face the hole, but you know, that's how the world works. Your dreamnesia is really that bad. You can brush up on our history and the whole using our records library behind me. Believe me, maggot, you'll need it. I just unlocked my side door. Once you collect yourself, get your butt out of here. Oh, and take this. You obtained an earpiece auto translator. This is required for any Alkian who operates radio equipment. It uses machine learning to translate any communication it hears into our language. Only use it when you get to the receiver, just in case some miracle happens and we're contacted. But I want you to break it before then. Okie dokie. You look like weird mice. Being like a mouse with like a fish. And robot limbs. It's like a fish face. It's like a mouse face. And then there's kind of a, a fish coming off to the side. Uh, but once you're done, head out through the side door. I don't want to see you. Oh, oops, sorry. Didn't mean to talk to him again. Okay. Technology here belongs to XM3009. Oh, is this probably... Ah, looks like there's some physical records here of Alkia's history. Which would you like to read? Hmm. What's up with the Alkians? Alkia is a desert planet in Bard Spiral Galaxy 1. Recorded history begins roughly 100,000 Alkia rotations ago, where a certain species evolved the ability to communicate. This species would soon learn how to grow, conduct agriculture, form civilization, civilizations, and conquer their own landmass, and would come to be known as Alkians. Alkians subsist solely off of, uh, plant species that thrive in the Alkian desert lands and have engineered such crops to support their large population. Further, their race consists almost entirely of males with a single queen that gives birth to all Alkians. Mating with the queen is done according to a collective need. A certain generation needs more miners, more 001 class Alkians will be permitted to mate. If our race calls for more scientists, higher classes will form the brunt of the breeding efforts. This is because it is believed that one cla one's class is inherited. Given how most Alkians are proud to fulfill their respective roles, this seems to be inarguably true. The queen, who admittedly lacks an ability to communicate, has no problem with this status quo and passes on her role to a new queen every 1,000 Alkian rotations or so. Furthermore, as a species, us Alkians pride authority, caste, and duty to one species. Very few of us have thought of deviancy, criminality, or truancy. Those that do, however, are quickly sundowned. Though, as will be elaborated on in a later section, Alkians are unsure if they are alone in this galaxy. As a collective, we doubt that there would exist any other civilization with the same discipline and vigor as us. Let's, uh, yeah, you know what? Let's just do all five. Alkians were quick to adopt advanced technologies across the board. These came in two major forms. The first were computers. For thousands of Alkia rotations, the Alkians would serve massive problems, would solve massive problems in engineering through the use of countless conscripted 001 class citizens. Each citizen would line up in a row and work on a series of math problems, which were passed on to others in the group. Proficient solvers were promoted. Those that made mistakes were sundowned. I'm guessing that means killed, which is a bummer. Uh, or, you know, put in labor camps and stuff. Uh, it's, I don't want to say that's a happier solution, but it's a different solution from dying, I suppose. Uh, for a while, this was sufficient, and Alkian society flourished. Much of our planet's greatest architecture and weapon systems were made using this method. However, it was eventually realized that this process of mass computation could be replicated by a series of connected transistors that could either be turned off or on. On this discovery, Alkia's computing revolution began. 001 class citizens, who were usually relegated to mass computation roles, were restructured into foot soldiers, miners, and hospital grunts to support Alkia's new path. The discovery of electronic computers, furthermore, laid the groundwork for our race's second prime advancement, quantum mechanics. This began when high-class Alkian scientists 
discovered that they no longer could build transistors any smaller as it would violate the laws of physics. Faced with a blockade and computational progress, these scientists turned to theories that were once considered foolish in search of answers. In doing so, they found a certain low-class Alkian who theorized that light could act as both a particle and a wave based on behavior he witnessed when shining a light through an open slit. At the time, the citizen had both went against his caste and scientific consensus, and for this he was sundowned. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> but his theory of particles that can act outside the laws of physics as, as we knew them proved extremely useful. Alkian computer scientists, considered to be the true discoverers of quantum mechanics, called these objects quibits, and set about making transistors that can work with them. Their findings were nothing short of extraordinary. Quibits had the ability to hold multiple values at once and transfer information instantaneously across great distances. Since then, nearly, aspect, nearly every aspect of Alkian society is based off of these quantum computers, and the scientists that created them were deemed the highest class of all. So this is a, the, a super fascism place. This is the most fascist government where the lo where lower caste citizens are... <laughs> their satisfaction, quote-unquote, is definitely not... Uh, despite what that thing said, it's not guaranteed. I would say most of them are probably pretty unhappy with where they are. But they don't, also don't really have anything, any way of pushing back. That is, I mean, as evidenced by right now, this guy's going to his death. Your your main character is going to his death. He's a main character. He might actually live through it, but he's, for all intents and purposes, he is being sent out to die against the whole. History of the whole. It should be noted that Alkia, Alkians were not the only intelligent species that inhabit this planet. There exists another, called the Whole, by Alkian scientists... This species has been a terrifying puzzle since our first contact. While Alkians are carbon-based life forms, the whole seem to be ma made largely of silicon. Silicon. Sil silicon. Yeah, silicon. Furthermore, they seem to lack any consistency of appearance. Seemingly, the only thing that whole citizens share in appearance is an ability to terrify. This is exacerbated by their diet. The whole are known to live solely off eating Alkian. Because the whole are most active in darkness, however, certain measures have been made to protect our race. Large, well-lit buildings have been erected. Outside travel at night is banned without an authority's orders. Still, as will be touched on later, the threat of the whole has never fully gone away. I feel like the consists sol solely on eating Alkians thing is a boogeyman put out by a fascist government. But... Uh, warfare! One of the most oft-asked questions to histories, historians of Alkia is this... Given how technologically advanced Alkians are, why have they not annihilated the whole through warfare? This question, largely asked by low-class citizens sent out on re re reclaiming or scouting missions, is easily answered with higher-class insight. While Alkians have made incredible advancements in, area in areas of computing, communication, and architecture, there's been little reason to evolve warfare capabilities, because the whole keep the citizens in check, you see. Because you make a race of dangerous other, you don't have to worry about your the underlings staying in line. So you purposefully don't evolve warfare capabilities because if you did, then you would wipe out the thing that kept the, uh, the lower classes in check. Again, very pr prototypical uh, otherism of a fascist government. This is not to say that such things have not been tried. Driving the whole to extinction, after all, has been a, ja a, <laughs> a jail. A goal of our race since we laid eyes on them. Since the whole only unbury themselves for deep, from deep underground at night, several nighttime attacks were conducted on whole hotspots using remote computer-guided explosives. The whole, however, seemingly knowing their targets were in a command silos miles away, didn't emerge to face the attacks. In turn, we shifted our focus to using fleets of 001-class Alkians with shoulder-mounted explosive launchers, all sent out at night. While this led to significant casualties on our end, it did the same for the whole. Further, several small whole were captured and made available for study. After several fleets of 001-class Alkians were killed, however, it became apparent that the amount of whole we blew up was not putting a dent in their population. 
If anything, with how many of our soldiers were becoming food, this made things worse. In turn, we have settled into a status quo of bunkering down in our well-lit towers and using Surveyor Corps to rid ourselves of any individual whole who have buried themselves near our residences. For several hundred Alkia rotations, this has been the case, and with only scant isolated attacks on our buildings, this seemingly will continue until we find another habitable planet. This isn't to say we've lost all hope, but it's theorized that the whole two have a civilization centered around a queen. Defeating them, in turn, could be as simple as killing their queen. Nobody has seen such a queen and lived to tell the tale, however. I think I'm starting to understand why this game is called Cohabitation. Uh, <clears throat> oh, shoot. I already read this one. My B. Search for planets. Alkia's miserable cohabitation with the whole has been an embarrassment for high-class citizens throughout all of history. The fact that so many of the lower classes must get eaten in this way is nothing short of... Alright, just turning the game down a bit, making sure you can hear me. Uh... Uh, is nothing short of something bad. In turn, our race has set our sights on space. After the quantum computing revolution, great leaps have been made in the realm of aerospace engineering and simulation. We can now say with confidence that we have the ability to develop, to deploy and colonize other planets at a distance of many light Alkia rotations away. However, such a planet has yet to be found. This is because Alkians have a very specific set of conditions required to sustain life with water and tropical temperatures chief among them. No planet, that can, no planet that consistently has both of these factors has been discovered by Alkian astronauts, but the search continues. It's theorized that planets of similar geography would also have the ability to, to sustain life, and thus produce signals. In turn, radio towers have become one of our race's most vital assets as we comb the galaxy for anyone to listen to us or give us something to listen to. Oh, right, this... Yeah, I can't touch it. Okay. Kind of want to go back and save after reading all that. But I actually... I, I suppose I could just skip reading it if I die. Well, off to my death. Oh, terminal whirls to life next to the control pad. It is now daytime. Free passage granted. Would you like to disengage the airlock? Yes. This must be Rations Bunker 17. No business here currently. Doop -a -doop -a -doo. Hospital 17. No business here currently. Oh, hey. What's up, homie? That blue exoskeleton. You're a 001 class, right? Shit. Don't tell any 003s this, but I hate my job so fucking much. Going out here with a gun, hoping I don't accidentally step into an open hole mouth. Is this really all there is? At least I'm not as bad off as you are, heading that blasted radio tower and all. Good luck out there, buddy. Haven't seen anyone return from there yet. Did I have a gun? I'm guessing this is the radio tower. Ooh. Goes up quite a ways, eh? You're unsure if you want to enter, but have no choice. Ooh. Hey, bud. You're zero, zero, 001 class, right? Tell you the same thing I told everyone else. Stay the hell away from here. But I know you're not gonna listen. Not like I have a choice, I guess. I hear any one zero, zero, 001 class that doesn't follow orders gets sundown. Heh. <laughs> Thought I'd be spared from that treatment. Look at me now. Hollis took a bite out of my midsection. And the only people sent in here are there to save the equipment, not me. That's to be expected on this goddamn planet, isn't it? Uh, there's hope? I don't even know. I agree, we're fucked. I'm, I'm, look on the bright side, bro. <laughs> be just like you, brother. Let me say this. Hope does not save one from teeth as long as my forearm. Good luck out there. I wasn't expecting anyone to actually try and reclaim this place, but I put the whole thing on lockdown on my way out. Even broke the first floor lock mechanism. Sorry, but if you want any chance of getting to the transmitter on top, you'll have to fix that first. 
only I knew what the zero zero threes on top would have the gall to send an army to be slaughtered. <coughs> well, thanks, dog. It is now block Borg. Free passage can break Blork without approval of Superior. Please contact Blork for more assistance. Door's locked. Given what lies ahead, you have a strong feeling you should save your progress. What command? Um, yeah. I'm... Let's take a look. What else can this thing do? Um, unlock door? Front door has been unlocked. Any new e communications, too? Reading first. Okay. 